Hi, my name is Tel Koendrink and I'm the founder and master trainer of Novolo, where we help schools, teachers and parents create a place for gifted and talented children. Hey, what I want to run you to today are the seven challenges of gifted and talented kids, children in education. And just as a little preface, preface, I want to share with you that this is not an intellectual model. I, mean, I didn't sit down in my ivory tower and, you know, what could be the challenges of children in the world? I spend my time guiding over 25 schools, seeing what is working, what isn't working. I've got a background in learning skills, mind mapping, memory training, speed reading, stuff like that. And I went into schools to see if I could help them, because these are skills that I missed when I was young. And invariably in my trainings, which runs over a span of several months, the question would come up, what is the biggest problem you at this moment have with gifted and talented children? And I would get answers, and sometimes I would, have an, uh, I would get questions. And sometimes I would have the answer, sometimes I wouldn't. So then I would go out and find a place where they would have the answer. And I traveled all around the world, different schools in my own country, to find the answers to these questions. And what are the seven challenges, the seven questions I got? The first is surrounding beliefs. What are the beliefs people have, children have, about their own skills and talents? If you say, I cannot do maths, I am bad at it, then you will believe that and you will not be able to perform as well in that. While if you say, I'm really good at it, then you will turn out to be better. You know, there's this quote, whether you say you can or you can't, either way you're right. And that's the case with beliefs. And a lot of gifted children have really misguided beliefs about what it is to be intelligent. And it's a shame because it's hindering them in their further education. Memory. In this part, I, will exp I would explain that there are two routes of learning. You've got the memory route, memorization, and you've got the understanding route. And the problem is that if one of these routes is too developed, if you've got too good a memory or too good an ability to understand, like gifted children, then the other route will usually get underdeveloped. So a kid has, who has an exceptional ability to understand stuff usually is less likely to develop the skill of memorization simply because he doesn't need it. In most school systems, the first eight or ten years of your education, you can get straight A's purely on understanding. And then you don't have reason to develop your memory. But usually at later stages, you do need your memory and then they're stuck. Then they don't know what to do anymore. Motivation. A standard problem, you know, all these kids who are stuck under performance have a lack of motivation. How come? A lot of reasons. Two main ones, misguided expectations. School will be cool, perfect and wonderful for me. And the first day I come in school, I expect to learn to read and write. And it takes ages before they get to that. And the other thing is how to get a learning success. Because learning success is based on putting your best foot forward and then getting rewarded for it. But what if you're in a school system that's so simple that you don't have to put your best foot forward and you're rewarded anyway. You're rewarded for stuff you didn't even do, that you didn't put effort into. No, this discourages you to work for your successes and it doesn't feel like a real success. So that's why it doesn't motivate you to work harder next time. So that's why you get demotivated and it's a downward spiral from there. Focused work. Sit down, do the stuff you need to do. Two main reasons. One, I call the prince and the princesses of the universe syndrome. Where kids are so used to getting the full attention from their parents that they are likely to try to get it in the classroom as well. If not through positive, then through negative behavior. And they've got a whole range of strategies to draw your attention. To make sure you're doing and paying attention to what they're doing. And the other side is executive functions. And there's actually a separate movie I've got on that as well. That your ability to automate certain things and your ability to have the higher reasoning developed in terms of organizing, time management, and task initiation and stuff like that helps you to do focused work on your own. Cooperation. 
Um, there was actually this kid who told me that, um, I asked him what is cooperation, he says well that's where I would get an A and they link me up with two students who get a D, so together we get a C. You know, that's what they do, because you're the best student, they give you the worst other students and they link you up together. But this doesn't motivate you to want to work together. Why would I want to work together if it's always a worse result than I could get by myself? So they're not motivated and often because they're not motivated, they don't develop the skills. And there's a base skill set that you need to be able to cooperate. Frustration. The ability to deal with stuff that isn't easy. And I call it also the myth of challenge because the assumption is that challenging materials will solve everything. Some children learn the behavior just to say, this is boring, that stuff is taken away from them. They don't have to do it anymore because they said it's boring and they get new stuff. But they never learn to deal with really tough problems. It's seldom in a school system that a kid gets a problem that takes more than five minutes to solve. I mean, it's always broken up into these little Sesame Street steps as a teacher that I once interviewed described it as. So they don't learn the value of perseverance and dealing with that frustration. And finally the concept stack. Knowledge is usually built up in several layers, but what if I miss one? Through all kinds of reasons, these smarter kids miss pieces of education, either because they're not there, because they skip grades, or because they learned it based on understanding, so they didn't memorize it, so they learned it for one time, but a month later they don't know it anymore. And then when other things stack up on top of that, they don't know what to do anymore. So a concept stack is sometimes broken with these kids, gives it kids. These are the seven biggest problems that I run into with kids in education. And when you as a school are able to solve all of them, then you already smoothened out the way for a kid to be successful in education by miles and miles. So what if you're interested in these things because I'm limited in these movies because they, they always teach you like if you make these movies don't make them longer than five minutes because people won't be able to focus anymore and they'll get distracted and stuff like that. So I try to keep it in short bursts. Um, if you're interested in these seven challenges and you want to know more about them, sign up for the free course. I've got an email course where you get a video training. Po over a period of three weeks you get a bunch of movies teaching you more details and more stuff about these seven challenges and what to do about them. So do leave your name and email address and then I'll be sending you the stuff you know, over the coming period and give you kind of an education how to deal with these challenges of gifted and talented kids. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here again, awesome, have a great day and bring out the best in yourself and in each other.